Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, everyone. Happy Hi. lunchtime. Happy lunchtime. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us today for our second state employee food drive uh, webinar. It's so, so exciting to be doing these. And I know it's different than in the past where all the events were virtual. We had the bins in all of our offices to bring food donations into. Um, so it's really, really cool to have us gathering online. I thank everyone for coming in. So uh, I'm Nick Anisich. I'm the Farm to School Program Manager at CDFA in the Office of Farm to Fork. And uh, our team in the Office of Farm to Fork, Rachel Finkus and Amy Garfinkel, have been helping with the food drive. So thank you so much to Rachel and Amy for helping make this happen. So today, as everyone's getting settled in, we'd like you to use the chat to please uh, share your name, your agency, spell it out, because there's so many state agency letters that we could uh, be associating, <laughs> might not be right. And then share your role at that agency. And I think it's a great way for us, like I said, to kind of replace that in-person, meet you in the hallway type of energy. So let's use the chat. You could share your name, your agency, and your role there. I think it'd be really fun for us to see everyone who's, uh, who's joining in. For everyone who's on here, you can just type it in. And for, um, oh, thank you, everyone. Here they come, here they come. Hi, Vanessa and Aaron. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. And you know, if you see someone you know in the chat, please feel free to have that conversation. The chat can, of course, also be used for asking questions, for um, cheering a speaker on, however you, want, however you want to do it to be social and kind. We always love that. And thank you to Fong for joining from uh, the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. Uh, that agency has been super supportive of the food drive this year, so thank you. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. All right, so I'm going to try to keep it short on my end because we have some great guest speakers today from different food banks throughout the state to share how our donations and how upcoming donations through the end of the food drive can uh, help reduce food insecurity and help alleviate hunger in California. So if we could go to the next slide, please. I have an update for us before we introduce our speaker. So here's the state employee food drive totals as of Monday, December 6th. For anyone on the phone, I'm gonna read it out. Pounds of food donated, 381 pounds. Monetary donations, over $15,000. For turkey donations, 560 individual turkeys have been claimed by state employees uh, as donations. It's over 7,000 pounds of turkeys. Uh, 121 state employees ran in the run to feed the hungry, which went right past my house. So I hope I saw some of you all there. And then we have 21 hours volunteered from state employees. So thank you to everyone who's been donating, who's been giving their time, giving their funds, giving their legs and energy, <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of exercising going on. Good for all of you. <laughs> uh, and thank you to everyone for volunteering. There's so many ways to make an impact today. So what we wanted to do with this call is to let the food banks tell you directly the different ways that we can support them and what a donation means to them, some of the work that they do. So thank you to everyone who's donated so far. We have just around one month left to donate. So what you can do is uh, go to the State Employee Food Drive website and find the donation credit form. You can go there to find a food bank to donate to. There's so many ways to get involved. So uh, thank you all. We could go to the next slide and we'll introduce our speakers today. All right, so today, please join us in welcoming our three speakers. Anne from Food for People in Humboldt County, Jessica Vaughn from Second Harvest of the Greater Valley, and Vivian Minton from Food Share Ventura County. So like I said, we have three food banks from three different parts of the state to show us what's happening in their community. So Anne is going to talk to us about Humboldt County. If anyone has questions, please put them in the chat so we can make sure our speakers uh, have time to ask and answer them. And at the end of the call today, we'll have a little bit of extra time for Q&A too. All right. Thank you, everyone. Take it away, Anne. 
All right. It's really nice to see all of you virtually. Thank you so much for joining in this and for being part of this effort. This is my first time doing this. So I'm really excited to share some information about food for people. And I'm gonna put up a little picture that kind of helps demonstrate our location. We are in Humboldt County and it's a beautiful and very rural area in the Northern part of our state that I hope you all have a chance to visit one day. So let's see here. Oh, having trouble getting, there we go. Yeah, this slide was taken out in Hoopa, which is in the eastern part of Humboldt County on the Hoopa Reservation and shows one of our distributions out there. So I would like to note that Food for People is one of 13 food banks in California that are considered rural and remote serving communities that are spread out over long distances. And we are generally operating with only a handful of staff and a limited donor base to support our efforts while still doing our best every single day to ensure that our friends and, and neighbors get the food they need to maintain good health. So to tell you a little bit about Humboldt County, our total population is about 135,000 people spread out across 4,000 square miles. And the poverty rate ranges from an average of 21% to more than 60% in some areas of our county. Many of the communities we serve are located in what's known as food deserts uh, with very limited access to a local grocery store that carries any sort of variety of affordable foods, including fresh produce. And that's a huge issue for many of our rural neighbors because gas prices are so high right now. So the turnout for our food distributions is typically very high. We are really proud of the fact that we've been serving our community for over 40 years, offering 18 programs that reach people of all ages by providing food assistance, advocacy support, nutrition education, lots of assistance applying for CalFresh and job training opportunities, as well as disaster response, which has become more critical in the last few years. We reach an average of 16,000 people every month, which is 12% of our county's population, and one third of those served are children and a quarter are seniors. So in addition to a network of 17 food pantries, we have child nutrition programs that help fill the gap for children who rely on the school meal programs for the majority of their nutrition during the week. And Backpacks for Kids is one of my favorite and our long running programs. And it's a weekend hunger relief program um, that reaches between 550 and 600 children every single week at 35 sites across our county. And it's totally community supported. Um, there's no other outside funding and we provide enough food for breakfast, lunch, dinner and snacks over the weekends for these kids. And in the summer months, we do a combination or either or summer lunch or a summer food box program to reach children in the more rural communities that don't have access to a school program. Our senior programs are also countywide and we offer home delivery service for those who are homebound due to disability or who may lack transportation. And that is largely thanks to our wonderful volunteer delivery drivers who also check in on folks and provide a great point of social contact with their visits. And they are part of a cadre of 250 to 400 volunteers every single month who support our programs. And it's often the number of hours they contribute are the equivalent of 10 to 12 full-time staff positions, which is amazing. Last year, we distributed uh, over 2 million pounds of food and 36% of that was fresh produce, uh, which reflects our commitment to provide the healthiest foods possible for those we serve. And I'm really thrilled that we're able to partner closely with local farmers and ranchers across our, our, our county and access the, the local bounty of what our region has to offer. We even have a farmer fund that allows us to contract with local farmers at the beginning of the growing season when their funds are limited and they grow crops specifically for the food bank. And I think all of us would agree that the past year and a half of dealing with a pandemic has been a lesson in creativity for all of us as we've had to adapt our food distribution models to keep the people we serve, our staff and our volunteers as safe as possible. Uh, we've instituted drive up and pop the trunk food distributions countywide, and we've expanded the reach of our mobile produce pantry, which is part of the picture you're seeing right here. 
um, which serves some of the most remote communities that are often about two hours away from our main base. And we've started including additional staple food and dairy and meat products for them, along with the fresh and mostly local organic produce that we're offering. This, also, this model also proved particularly helpful during the fire season this past year as we worked with households that had lost their homes or had to evacuate. And unfortunately, that's becoming a stark reality for many of us as the fire season seems to get longer every year and more people are displaced from their homes. You know, I wanna say we really appreciate the support we receive from our community and from donors far and wide who often have some kind of connection to Humboldt County and I always enjoy hearing those stories. Their donations of food and funds make it possible for us to provide food for those in need of assistance. And we invite anyone who would like to learn more about what we do to visit our website at foodforpeople.org. There's lots of information about our programs if you know someone who might need assistance. And there's also easy ways to donate and um, support our efforts. And I will say financial donations are really so much appreciated because it allows us to purchase the food we need to fill the gaps. And in closing, I'd like to give a special shout out, shout out to Senator Mike McGuire, our local representative, who initiated the Humboldt Holiday Food Drive on our behalf six years ago this year. And uh, he sets it up as a local competition uh, between the six area high schools and encourages the students to see which school can raise the most food and funds. He checks in with them weekly for the weeks leading up to the, the culmination, which for us is tomorrow at our local Safeway, when the students will be delivering the food and funds that they collected. And he's so engaged and so inspiring to these future leaders that I, I can't say thank you enough to him for his efforts. So thank you all for letting me share a little bit about what we do and look forward to any questions you have. Thank you so much, Anne, for sharing all of that information. Uh, the Food for People website is in the chat for anyone who's on the call who can tap in there. And Anne, you know, you're asking for these connections to Humboldt County. I think all of us do, whether it's a trip up the coast for a vacation or a family connection up there. It's so incredible. So if anyone wants to donate, they can go through that link and then of course, fill out a food drive credit form uh, to submit that so we can count it, know, what, know that you're donating. All right, so next on our list of speakers is Jessica from the Second Harvest of the Greater Valley Food Bank. Jessica, take it away. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for allowing us to come on and tell you a little bit about who Second Harvest of the Greater Valley is and what we do on a daily basis. Um, Second Harvest of the Greater Valley actually covers eight Northern California counties, so Alpine all the way down to Merced and everything in between um, falls under our jurisdiction. So we couldn't do it alone, obviously. We have wonderful partners, um, partner distribution organizations spread across each of the counties that we serve that help us. And on average, we're seeing roughly 30 to 35,000 people per month um, come through our doors our food pantry doors and our partner organization doors. Um, Second Harvest has been around just like Anne's organization for over 40 years. We're actually at 45 years. We have, the way that we work is we want to make it as easy for people in need to access food as we possibly can. So a lot of our programs are placed in neighborhoods, on school sites, at community centers, right where we know there is a need, because the last thing we want is to make it difficult for somebody that is already struggling to get the food services that they so desperately need. We operate through food pantries, programs like our Senior Brown Bag, our Fresh Food for Kids, our Farm Worker Program, and then we also have a Senior Home Delivery as well as a Mobile Produce Pantry, which has been our most popular, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic, because we are able to take that mobile distribution center out to whatever location needs it the most and provide people with a lot of fresh produce, up to 50 pounds sometimes, when they're coming through. So it also kind of allows a little bit of anonymity for people if they're you know, a lot, what we've seen over the last two years is that a lot of people are utilizing food banking services for the first time, and it's really difficult for them to come to terms with the fact that they do need the help that we provide. So being able to give them a little bit of that anonymity has been a wonderful thing and has allowed us to really reach out to more people 
um, over the last two and a half years than ever before. We want to give a little bit of a shout out to DLA here in French Camp, who is one of our partners. They provided a great number of turkeys for us this holiday season that allowed us to actually feed some families um, throughout our service territory. And in total, we did about 7,700 turkeys and we could not do it alone. We're a very lean staff, just like what Ann said. There's only about 22 of us um, that are there on a daily basis. So the volunteership, the donations, everything that you guys are providing to us have really been beneficial. And we, we just cannot thank you enough. So we look forward to this continued partnership and we thank you so much for everything that you're doing on your end. Thank you so much, Jessica. I think it's so cool. Thank you. I mean, it's so important to hear that 22 of you are doing 7,000 turkeys are doing all these distributions. Like it's incredible, the reliance on volunteers, on donations. Oh, it's amazing. It's, yeah. it's, and also that wherever you're at in the state, one of the things that's great for us as state employees, a lot of us are working remote now. So we're back in our homes. We're not commuting to work. We can really embed in our local communities again and take your commute time and turn it to volunteer time if you're able to. You know, there's so many ways we can support. So thank you, Jessica, for sharing that information. I put a link to the second harvest of the Greater Valley uh, website in the chat. So anyone who's on the call can look at it there for more information or to make a donation. And all these links we'll send out too. So thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so our last speaker today is Vivian from Food Share Ventura County. We are so excited to have you here. And again, the entire state is gigantic. It's California, we're huge. So we went from the coast and you know, we didn't make it all the way down, but we got to Ventura County, which is pretty far Southern California. So thanks Vivian, take it away. Tell us about uh, your organization, how we can help. Absolutely. And, and I've, I've actually got a, a presentation. So just bear with me a second. I'm gonna screen share and hopefully this will work. All right, desktop, share. All right, start from beginning, play from start. There we go. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody that's joined today. And it was really interesting to hear what Anne and Jessica were talking about as well. Um, you know, and uh, just to add to the longevity of food banking in this state, uh, Ventura, uh, Food Share Ventura County has been around for 43 years. So somewhere in between uh, the last two speakers. <laughs> um, but it also shows you just how long, of course, the, the issue of food insecurity and hunger in, 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 our, in our state has, has been going on. This is not a, a recent phenomenon for, for sure. So um, our mission at uh, Food Share Ventura County is to lead the fight against hunger in Ventura County. Uh, you know, no surprises there. And our tagline is because no one should go hungry. And it, there's a surprising number of people who struggle with hunger and food insecurity. And I just think it's worth kind of referencing what food insecurity means, because we sort of toss that phrase around as if everybody understands it. But food insecurity basically means that people don't have regular access to a source of nutritious food. And so it's not just necessarily about hunger, it's about accessing healthy food, it's being able to access fresh produce, it's being able to access food that actually has nutritional value. And that's a big part of, of what we do. Um, so just moving along, I thought I'd just kind of very briefly cover how we serve our community. So we're down in Ventura County, um, sandwiched between Santa Barbara and Los Angeles counties uh, on the coast. We're a very agricultural county. Um, we have a population of about 850,000 people. Um, we are currently serving around 140,000 people a month. So it's a big percentage of our population and she really struggles with hunger and food insecurity. Um, so this is a, a little chart that we show quite regularly. We actually have this up, this up in the wall in our foyer to help explain how we do what we do, because I think there's sometimes confusion about what a food bank is. So essentially a food bank is a, is a kind of repository um, of, of food. We, we bring in all the food. We have about 45,000 square feet of warehousing space between three warehouses. We have huge industrial sized freezers and we bring in food from a variety of different sources. A lot of it is purchased, um, about $150,000 a month at the moment we are spending on purchasing food. 
A lot of it comes through food drives. And, and this is why this conversation today is so important. Food drives are critical to our work. Uh, we are actually just about to launch our biggest food drive of the year, which is called Cantry, uh, where we build huge trees out of cans in Figaro Plaza in downtown Ventura. It's a great community event. If you do happen to be in our neighborhood, please drop by because it's a lot of fun and it's happening this weekend. We also get a lot of food from retail stores, although with the pandemic that dropped off um, noticeably because people were rushing to supermarkets, bulk buying, and so there was very little left to give to food banks. We also, uh, as I said, we're a very agricultural county and we have great relationships with agricultural partners in our county and beyond our county, actually. Um, and so that's a very big source of fresh produce for us, uh, the food bank. We also have a lot of, of people who glean for us. We have a lot of people with big backyards and orange trees and avocado trees. And so we have a big gleaning program. So that's another source of food that comes into us. And then we also get food through the USDA and the government. They provide largely shelf stable things like rice and pasta and those sorts of products. And then we distribute those in, in ways similar to Anne and Jessica were describing. We have a, a network of about 190 pantry partners and agencies across the county. Um, those are often in churches, community groups, um, and they are an incredible source of direct delivery to our community. We also supply to group homes, um, people struggling with addiction, things like that. We provide food for, for those kind of organizations. We have after school programs. We have drive-through distributions, more of that in a moment. We started those at the beginning of the pandemic and we continue to run those. We also have congregate meal sites where we provide food for hot meals. And we also have programs serving seniors, um, our senior kids program. Um, and we uh, distribute food through all sorts of community centers and um, residential sites for seniors. So the front line of COVID-19, I mean, really, you know, if it feels like this has been going on forever, doesn't it? Um, and it, 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 you know, it's been nearly two years now, which just boggles our mind, really. So um, since the start of 2020, we have distributed 21.6 million pounds of food in our county. Um, that's double, by the way, the amount that we distributed in 2019, which is about 13.6 million. So that shows you the impact that COVID-19 has had on our population, obviously not just here in Ventura County, but nationwide. Um, as Anne was mentioning, volunteers are so critical to our mission. We cannot do our job without volunteers. We had 76,000 hours of donated time um, since the start of, of COVID. A lot of that's come from the National Guard. Um, we were lucky to be able to get um, the National Guard in our local National Guard has been with us since April of 2020, packing emergency food boxes. And you can see that in one of our warehouses there on the on the right hand side in that photograph. Um, that's equivalent to the additional 36 members of staff and our total staff is 36. So it basically has doubled our staff. We couldn't have done what we've done. We couldn't have distributed that amount of food without that level of volunteerism. So we are so grateful for everybody who gives their time. It's so critical. We've also run uh, more than 520 drive through distributions. And we started those on the 1st of April last year, thinking that we'd do them for, you know, two or three months maybe. And here we are uh, nearly two years later and we're still doing them. We're, we're doing about five or six a week, depending on the week. Our biggest one in Oxnard still brings in between six and 800 families a week. Um, and we uh, do the pop the trunk, as, as Anne was describing, and we put boxes of shelf stable um, pantry items in there. And when we can source uh, fresh produce and also dairy products and things like that, too. So there's been just, a, you know, an unprecedented rise in, 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 in need. And, you know, as an organization, uh, we, we have dealt with crises before, fire <laughs> being one, the Thomas fire that was, you know, hugely devastating in our area. And, and you know, the COVID pandemic has been uh, yet another crisis. Um, so uh, in regular, normal times, whatever that now means, we, we typically served about 75,000 people a month, but our estimate now is it's around 140,000. 
And at the height of the pandemic, it was closer to 300,000. And that number's come down a little bit now. And, and, and as Jessica and Anne were saying, many of those people have, are, are seeking our services for the first time. Um, you know, often, you know, people are living paycheck to paycheck, you know, what, one missed paycheck is, is, is devastating and, and very difficult for people to sort of dig them their way out of. So we're seeing people now who've never previously used a food bank's services who are coming regularly to, to, to acquire food. Um, and we don't expect that to, uh, to change anytime soon, sadly. So how can you help? Well, <laughs> you can visit our website. It's, it's probably the easiest uh, way for, for you to help. Um, as with all food banks, we really rely on three things. We rely on money, we rely on food donations, and we rely on volunteers. And, and you can access uh, all of those things through our website. We have drop downs there, as you can see on the right. Uh, with all various different ways that you can get involved and ways that you can donate, whether that's a one-off donation or whether you want to become a sustaining monthly donor, which is always great. Sustaining don donors are, are our favourite <laughs> harvesters. That helps us plan ahead uh, in a way that we can't when we just have uh, one-off donors. But either way, we, we, would, we would love you to come and get involved in whatever way suits you best. Uh, so please come to our website. And then finally, I just wanted to reassure everybody on this call that you can donate to us with confidence. Um, uh, 96 cents of every dollar that you donate goes directly to our programs and purchasing food. And we're really proud of that figure. We work really hard to keep our overheads down to an absolute minimum. Uh, we are a four-star charity navigator. We've just been... Um, uh, awarded a Central Coast Best Place to Work, which after the last year and a half, we are particularly proud of um, that, that people still want to work with us. And, and last year we were also named uh, 2020 Nonprofit of the Year. So uh, we, are, we are really proud of all of those things. Um, and uh, yes, please come check us out, have a look at our website. There's videos, there's all sorts of information and, um, and do pop your questions in the chat box. And, and thank you to everybody who's joined this call and uh, your, your support is so appreciated. Awesome, thank you so much Vivian for sharing all of that. And what a beautiful slide deck too to show what it looks like. What does 140,000 people participating in a food bank every month, what does that look like? And then sharing the stories of how many families per week are accessing the meals. It's so important and valuable. So I have one more link to share in the chat before I do that, I just want to say thank you again to Anne and Jessica and Vivian for sharing all of this information with us today. We had over 50 people on the call at one point, and this is just a lunchtime call. So the fact that our state employees care, please, uh, for all of our fellow state employees that are on it, you know, be a megaphone too with your donation. Do it as a team. Uh, support each other in making these impacts throughout the state because we know the need is so great. So thank you to Anne and Jessica and Vivian and all the work that you're doing. We're so grateful for all of you. Um, if people have questions about donations, if they have questions, please put them in the chat and um, we can answer them. The last link I'm going to share is to our state employee food drive website. And here's some important things you need to know. 31 days left. There's 31 days left to donate. So on the website, you can find a food bank to donate to. There's links to these three organizations you heard about today. If you click on donate and go to their part of the state, you'll see their food bank. Uh, so you can do that. There's also the food drive credit form because we don't know that you donated and can't add to you, add your donation to our total if you don't submit your credit form. So you can find a way to donate you can find the credit form on there. So please use our website to uh, find that information. So for questions, if anybody has questions, they can put them in the chat now. I see one from Marissa, thank you. On the food drive credit form where it has volunteer hours, is it just counting hours towards the food bank? Can we volunteer hours also count towards other efforts? I think anything related to food security, we will count it as volunteerism. So if it's a food bank, a food pantry, you're going and doing the gleaning, which is a different activity, which we have uh, here in Sacramento, there's gleaning organizations too. Uh, you know, all that would count towards uh, relieving hunger in your community. And then Stephanie, thank you for your question. When you try to fill out this, uh, the donation form, 
it asked me if I wanted to delete the previous form submitted. Any ideas? Is that for one of the specific food banks from today, Stephanie? Or is that the state employee form? The state employee form. We'll email you and figure it out. We got your info from registering for the webinar. Thank you. We'll make sure that you can uh, get the credit. <laughs> and yeah, uh, I saw the, the, the follow-up here, Marissa. I think that totally counts. Volunteer hours supporting donations to a food bank. Yeah, count it. That's volunteering. Okay, Stephanie, thanks. Aaron, thank you to everyone.